Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Kiwi fourth quarter and full year 2019 earnings conference call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the call over to Ms. Varvara Kisaleva, Interim Chief Financial Officer of Kiwi. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Kiwi fourth quarter and full year earnings call. I am Varvara Kisilova, Interim Chief Financial Officer, and with me today are Boris Kim, our Chief Executive Officer, and Andrei Protopopov, Chief Executive Officer of the Payment Services segment. A replay of this call will be available until Tuesday, April 7, 2020. Access information for the replay is listed in today's earnings press release, which is available on our Investor Relations website at investor.kiwi.com. For those listening to the replay, this call was held and recorded on March 24, 2020. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this call may contain forward-looking statements as they are defined under the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements about our expectations for future performance are subject to known and unknown risks and uncertainties. Give it caution that these statements are not guarantees of future performance. All forward-looking statements made today reflect our current expectations only, and we undertake no obligation to update any statements to reflect the events that occur after this call. Please refer to the company's most recent annual report on Form 20F filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission for factors that could cause our actual results to differ materially from any forward-looking statements. During today's call, management will provide certain information that will constitute non-IFRS financial measures, such as adjusted net revenue, adjusted EBITDA, adjusted net profit, and adjusted net profit per share. Reconciliations to IFRS measures and certain additional information are also included in today's earnings press release. With this, we'll begin by turning the call over to Boris Kim, our Chief Executive Officer. Thank you, Barbara, and good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I am really excited to be here with you today hosting my first earnings call, and it's a great honor and a big responsibility for me. Having said that, I am pleased to share our fourth quarter and full year 2019 results with uh, you today. This year, we demonstrated outstanding performance, especially in our payment service business, which delivered 27% segment net revenue and segment net profit growth year over year. Our growth was driven by the solid performance in our key streams, payment services for digital entertainment merchants, digital money, remittances, and projects we developed for self-employed and sharing economy partners. Our growth was enforced by our overall expansion of our payment ecosystem, driven by the scaling of our operation and enhancement of the product proposition we offer to our users, merchants, and partners. Throughout 2019, uh, we have also benefited from strong secular trends in our key verticals. Even though in the end of the fourth quarter, we have noticed a slowdown in secular growth in some of our key niches, we continue to develop our ecosystem by targeting core and creating new niches and areas of expertise. This quarter, we also continue to invest uh, in the development of our financial services project, primarily service, while Sochka project has booked some positive net profits this year. I'm happy to say that as we continue to optimize our operations, we see that the majority of the projects that we have been invested in demonstrate improving operating and financial performance. I believe that our results in this year clearly demonstrate the value of our ecosystem to our customers and serve as a solid foundation for the future stability of the company. At the same time, we see many challenges ahead, primarily resulting from the recent pandemic coronavirus outbreak and affect some of our key categories as steep decline in oil prices and rubble devaluation. The full effects of these factors and their magnitude are still to be evaluated. Nevertheless, we believed and have proved many times before that we have created a resilient ecosystem that is highly adaptive and consumer-oriented and will continue to develop it further. We will also continue to optimize our operations and implement stricter cost 
controls. Now, on to some operating highlights. First quarter 2019, total adjusted net revenue increased by 7% to reach 6.3 billion rubles, up to from 5.8 billion rubles in the fourth quarter of 2018. The increase was mainly driven by payment services and consumer financial services segments, net revenue growth. This growth was slightly offset by a technical decrease in the SME segments, net revenue, and negative net revenue contribution of the rocket bank segment. For the full year 2019, total adjusted net revenue increased by 18% to reach 23.2 billion rubles, up from 90.7 billion rubles in the prior year, driven by the same factors as our quarterly numbers. Andre will discuss the performance of our payment services segment in a minute, while I will walk you through the results of our other segments. Consumer financial services segment payment volume reached 27.8 billion rubles for 2019, increased by 74% as compared to the prior year. Our loan portfolio reached 8 billion rubles in, as of December of, uh, 30. Uh, first uh, 2019. Segment net revenue was uh, 469 million rubles as compared to 199 million rubles uh, in the fourth quarter of the prior year, demonstrating the development and improving monetization of the solid project. Throughout 2019, we have significantly enhanced the product offering and improved the monetization of the project. At the same time, we continue to explore opportunities to support and reinforce the scaling of the project. Since 2018, we have been testing various multi-bank platform models, primarily aimed at sharing the funding and credit risk with the partner banks. However, none of the arrangements have yet proven to be economically efficient and mutually beneficial for us and for our partners. Having reached a substantial scale in positive uh, business unit economics uh, the, of the product, we are currently evaluating different strategies for further development of service projects. Strategies we consider primarily target the shift of our key focus to offering customized products and services to customers in specific niches that we primarily target in our payment business treatment. Uh, as a part of our consumer financial service segment, we also aim uh, to develop more targeted products and services offering for specific groups of customers, such as, for example, self-employed. Moving to the SME segment. Tochka platform we developed together with Accurity Bank continued to demonstrate robust operating, operating and financial performance in the fourth quarter of 2019 throughout the year. At the same time, our SME segment net revenue decreased to 193 million rubles for the fourth quarter of 2019 as a result of the transfer of Touch Corporation to GCC Tochka and happened in February 1st, 2019. Further, I would like to give you an update of our latest developments in relation to the Rocket Bank project. Following our decision of our board of directors in August, we investigated potential partial or complete scale of Rocket Bank. We were not able to find a suitable buyer for Rocket Bank. As, as a result, the board uh, of directors has determined to win down the Rocket operations. We have commenced this process, and we are currently reviewing the most efficient way to reuse or dispose of uh, the Rocket Bank assets, including piloting certain projects early developed on the Rocket Bank in our payment services segment, particularly in our B2B2C product pipeline. As a part of the measures we are taking to win down rocket projects, we intend to terminate marketing activities, including cancellation of the rocket bank loyalty program, reduce headcount, and increase tariffs, which we believe will result in uh, overall significant decline uh, in the number of uh, rocket bank customers and termination of the current rocket bank service offering in the short term. We anticipate the wind down will be completed by the end of 2020. Total net loss of the rocket band segment for 2020 shall not exist 1.5 billion rubles. Last but not least, 
I'm glad to announce the following the determination of the fourth quarter 2019 financial results of our board of directors has approved the dividend of 22 cents per share. In accordance with the decision of the board, we will be distributing 65% of our adjusted net profit for 2019. Further considering our expectations about the performance of the group as well as uh, our anticipated level of investments in 2020, Board of Directors approved a target dividend payout ratio of at least 50% of group adjusted net profit for 2020. The Board of Directors reserves the right to distribute the dividends on a quarterly basis as it deems necessary so that the total annual payout is in accordance with the target provided, though the payout ratio for each of the quarters may vary and be above or below provided targets. Even in these challenging times, we see many opportunities both in the payment space and the adjacent markets, and I believe we are well positioned to continue strengthening our ecosystem with the ultimate goal of securing our long-term goals and prospects. Taking this into account, we remain committed to distributing investments of cash to our shareholders and currently have no plan to postpone or refrain from paying dividends. With this, I will turn the call over to Andre for an update on payment services business. Andre? Thank you, Boris, and good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. Now, on to the results of our payment service segment. This year, we have processed close to 1.5 trillion rubles in cash and electronic payments, increasing our turnover by almost one-third. I believe this is an impressive achievement and would like to thank our entire team for their contribution. Our results clearly emphasize the value and relevance of the payment ecosystem we have developed so far and aim to develop further. For the fourth quarter 2019, our payment service segment volume increased by 22% to reach 400.5 billion rubles, driven by significant growth in money remittance, e-commerce, and financial services verticals, which grew 31, 29, and 13% respectively. The growth in e-commerce and money remittance verticals were largely driven by the development of our key streams, namely digital entertainment, self-employed, and sharing economy partners, where we are focused on extending our partner and merge network, building up our relations with our existing partners, and expanding our product offering. This growth was reinforced by secular market trends towards the digitalization of payments in our key niches. The growth in the financial service category was driven primarily by the new distribution contract. Payment service segment net revenue increased 16% in the fourth quarter 2019 to reach 5.5 billion rubles compared to 4.7 billion rubles the prior year. Payment service payment adjusted net revenue increased 18% to 4.8 billion rubles up from 4.1 billion rubles in the prior year, primarily as a result of the net revenue growth in our money remittance, financial services, and e-commerce verticals which grew 29, 18, and 13% respectively. Our financial results in this segment were predominantly driven by increase in volumes. Our payment average adjusted net revenue yield was down by 4 basic points year over year to 1.21%, driven by the yield decline in our e-commerce and money remittance market verticals. Such decline was driven mainly by our focus on increasing the scale of the business, through offering our merchants and partners new services such as an online acquiring, which may have lower commissions than our key wallet solutions. The growth of these new product streams may dilute our payment average adjusted net revenue yield, primarily in the e-commerce category, while the commission we charge in our core solutions remains stable. Payment service other adjusted net revenue increased 4% to 647 million rubles as compared to 622 million in the prior year as a result of growth of interest revenue that is in line with the overall growth and scaling of our ecosystem. As Barins mentioned earlier, our growth was driven by the robust performance we have achieved in our key strategic streams and through the expansion and enhancement of the product proposition we offer to our users, merchants, and partners. 
Nonetheless, in the December 2019, we started to experience a certain slowdown in the growth rate of our payment service segment that resulted from a number of factors. These factors include secular saturations and growth slowdown in the betting market, implementation of additional know your client and anti-money laundering measures, and the closure of our largest Kazakh merchants that significantly affected our business in that region. Some of these trends can be further amplified by the events that we are currently unfolding, including the negative effect on the betting industry caused by postponement and termination of the major sports events due to the outbreak of the coronavirus and the global pandemic. Nevertheless, we believe that we have created a resilient ecosystem that is highly adaptive and consumer-oriented and will continue to develop it further by targeting our core niches and areas of expertise and creating new use cases well fitted to serve our users, merchants and partners, as well as develop new strategic niches to support our longer-term growth. With this, I will pass over to Varvara for more details on the financial performance of the group. Varvara? Thank you, Andrei. Moving on to expenses. Strong operating performance of our payment services business that continues to generate substantial cash flows supported our investments in the development of the new project. Our net revenue growth outpaced the growth of the expenses supported by the improving operating leverage of the group. This being said, adjusted EBITDA for the fourth quarter 2019 increased 9% to 1.6 billion rubles from 1.5 billion rubles for the same period in the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA margin was 26% compared with the 25% for the same period in the prior year. For the full year 2019, adjusted EBITDA increased by 53% to 9.1 billion rubles from 5.9 billion rubles for the same period in the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA margin was 39% compared with 30% in the prior year. Adjusted EBITDA margin expansion primarily resulted from the adjusted net revenue growth underpinned by the decline in advertising, client acquisition, and related expenses, decline in rent of premises and related utility expenses resulting from the adoption of ISRS 16 that was partially offset by the new class of expenses related to Tochka platform services arising after the transfer of the Tochka's operations to an associate starting from February 2019, increase of the compensation to employees and related taxes resulting from the personal expense growth primarily in payment service segment and corporate and other categories, and an increase in the credit loss expenses predominantly related to the service project. Group adjusted net profit increased 15% for the fourth quarter 2019 to 1.2 billion rubles from 1 billion ruble in the fourth quarter of the prior year. While for the full year 2019, group adjusted net profit increased by 61% to 6.7 billion rubles from 4.1 billion in the prior year. Adjusted net profit was largely affected by the same factors as adjusted EBITDA, as well as by decrease in the net foreign exchange loss as compared to the same period in the prior year. Payment services segment net profit increased 3% to 2.7 billion rubles compared with 2.6 billion rubles in the prior year, driven primarily by payment services segment net revenue growth slightly offset by the growth of compensation to employees and related taxes, as well as one-off increase in marketing and advertising expense. Consumer financial services segment net loss was 590 million rubles in the fourth quarter 2019, as compared to a net loss of 500 38 million rubles in the same period of the prior year, resulting from the growth in loss from initial recognition on loans at market rate due to the expansion of the service project and the increase in marketing and advertising expenses, mostly related to the, to the consumer acquisition, offset by the increase in service net revenue. SME segment net profit was 187 million rubles as compared to a net loss of 281 million rubles in the fourth quarter of 2018. Net profit growth in the SME segment resulted primarily from the growth and development of the Tochka business. Rocket Bank segment net loss was 684 million rubles for the fourth quarter 2019, as compared to the net loss of 584 million rubles for the same period in 2018. The substantial increase in net loss was primarily driven by the increase of marketing and advertising expenses, as well as compensation to employees and related taxes. Now on to our guidance. 
Firstly, I would like to remind everyone that at the moment we are not able to accurately estimate the potential impact of the outbreak of the COVID-19 strain of coronavirus on our business, including the negative impact on the betting industry in general and our revenue generated from products and services we provide to our betting merchants, caused by postponement and termination of the major sports events. In addition, it is currently unclear how much consumer demand will be negatively affected from the outbreak of COVID-19 and what effect this outbreak will have on the macroeconomic environment as a whole. The full impact remains uncertain and will depend on the length and severity of the effect of the coronavirus on economic activity in our market. The full scope of the negative impact that the abrupt decline in oil prices and resulting devaluation of ruble may have on the Russian economy also remains unclear, but has the potential to be very significant. Our outlook reflects our current expectations and views only, and is based on the trends we see as, as of the date of this earning call. If such trends were to deteriorate further, the impact on our business and operations could be more severe than currently expected. We continue to monitor the situation closely. Having said that, we expect group adjusted net revenue to increase by 3 to 13% over 2019. Payment services segment net revenue to change by minus 3 to plus 8% over 2019, while adjusted net profit of the group is expected to increase by 10 to 30% over 2019. At that time, we reserve the right to revise the guidance in the course of the year when additional information regarding the effects of the ongoing events becomes available. With that, operator, please open up the call for questions. Thank you. At this time, we'll be conducting a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you'd like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your handset before pressing the star key. Our first question comes from the line of Chris Kennedy with William Blair. Please proceed with your question. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking the questions. I have two. I just wanted to get a better uh, – can you give an update on recent trends in the business? And I understand there's a lot of uncertainty, but can you kind of talk about what's happened over the last couple of quarters or even weeks, if possible? Hi, Chris. It's Andre. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, so we are uh, closely monitoring the trends. In the couple of, uh, I would say, in the last week, we started to see a real decline in the sports betting business, as we described. So it's not yet clear how, I would say, deep it will go. At the same time, we see some uh, positive dynamics in other categories, like uh, online games, for example, uh, and some others. So I would say it's too early to say that... Uh, the trends are already set in the new environment. Uh, clearly that we will see some decline in betting business, though we think it's a temporary one uh, as soon as the sports events will be back. Uh, we, will be, uh, we will see the um, volumes uh, back as well. Uh, to give you a little bit more color on this one, uh, we see that uh, betting company is not, I would say, <laughs> Uh, sitting, so they are changing their, their proposition to clients. Uh, there are some new sports uh, they, they're introducing, including the cyber sports, uh, so that it's not, uh, I would say, zero. It's uh, still, still volumes are there and clients are there. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. And then one, one update on Sovest. It sounds like you're kind of changing your strategy, and can you? Talk about the expected losses from Sovest in 2020 or the pathway to break even, if possible. Uh, uh, so, uh, as I mentioned here, yeah, we are uh, still uh, uh, thinking on the strategy of, of Sovest. Uh, uh, one moment. Uh, mm, already mentioned uh, mentioned was um, connected to multi banking uh, model and i uh, must say that multi banking model uh, didn't work uh, as we expected uh, so uh, now we consider some other uh, 
perspectives and strategic choices for uh, service, including uh, uh, online loans uh, and value proposition for a self-employed uh, segment uh, to be more connected to a um, payment segment and our proposition for uh, for uh, for that sort of things. Um, we still think and we believe that in any scenario, uh, service will break even uh, later this year. Okay. Thanks a lot for the update. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Vladimir Bespalov with VTB Capital. Please proceed with your question. Uh, hello, thank you for this presentation and thank you for taking my question. Uh, my first question will be on Rocket Bank. Could you maybe provide more color? Why do you expect such a big loss of 1.5 billion rubles from Rocket Bank this year, uh, given that it's more, not than last year, but than the year before that, uh, given that you are unwinding this, uh, this asset? Uh, where this money will go. And the second question is uh, maybe you could also provide some color since you are going to transfer some of operations of Rocket Bank to payment services. What kind of operations are going to be transferred and how these are going to impact, let's say, the business and the profitability of the payment services segment? Thank you. Valodya, hi. Uh, that's uh, Varvara. Thank you for your question. So as for the cost, uh, that's basically our current estimate on the, of the maximum cost that we may incur this year for uh, the operations of Rocket Bank that has taken place in the first quarter. I remind you that uh, we started, we're currently launching uh, the winding down process. We have not launched it before and we were incurring the uh, kind of run rate uh, and the burn rate of Rocket Bank in the first quarter. Uh, so apart from the burn rate that we had uh, in the first quarter 2020, uh, we will also incur a certain costs uh, for um, uh, working with uh, for, for, for the period while the clients are uh, while the number a number of clients is decreasing. We will be running. Uh, we will have the team running the business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are certain winding down costs that are included in this guidance, and we believe that uh, including certain redundancies, et cetera, and we believe that the total amount of costs that we incurred this year will not exceed this number. So that's quite a rough estimate. So uh, I will, I will uh, comment on the second question, it's Andrei. Uh, so the uh, the business we are currently look at, uh, lo looking at is uh, – we call it uh, B2B2C. Uh, it's basically uh, the payout solution that Rocket Bank is now providing to some of uh, the partners uh, with the payouts of the to the self-employed of the salary to the Rocket Bank's cards and accounts. And at the first glance, how we see it, it can be synergetic to what we are doing uh, uh, in payment services with the payouts for the self-employed with the wallets and payouts to cards. We are uh, currently assessing how how synergetic it can be, what extra revenue uh, and uh, partners that it can bring to payment services. So it will take uh, several months for us to assess, and then we will make the final decision. Uh, regarding the cost, uh, we believe it will not be material for the payment service segment this year. Okay, thank you very much. And maybe one more question, a follow-up on service. Could you provide your estimate of uh, a potential loss that service can generate this year? Uh, so, uh, um, well, it's embedded in our guidance, uh, the loss that service can generate this year, and it definitely depends to some extent on how the macroeconomic situation will uh, develop and how the um, credit risk for its all and the clients will behave. Uh, however, we believe that uh, at, at, at the current moment, we believe that the total loss for service will not exceed $1 billion. Okay, thank you very much. Very helpful. Thank you. Our next question comes from line of Maria Suganova with BCS Global Markets. Please proceed with your question. 
Uh, yes, hello, thank you for the call. Uh, I have two questions. So first one is uh, on your guidance. If you could provide us any color, what exactly are you including in your guidance? Like, for instance, do you expect this issue is embedded in the like, current situation that it will stay for one quarter, or do you assume that it will stay for several quarters? So just for us to understand, like, uh, whether, the, wh whether the downside or upside can be. So that's the first one. And second one uh, on Rocket Bond, just to follow up. So out of this maximum 1.5 billion rubles cost, like if you look at the long-term run rate uh, for this business on annual costs, what do you think, uh, like, for instance, what, what kind of loss we could see in 2021? Uh, what kind of sustainable loss uh, will there remain after you run down the operations? That's it from my side. Thank you. Uh, Masha, hi. Uh, so uh, as for the guidance question, uh, we currently estimate uh, that uh, the betting market can be down for up to six months, uh, and that uh, the um, forecast that is embedded in our current guidance uh, is at last for a longer period of time, and if all the sports events that have been postponed or canceled uh, will be only uh, running in 2021, uh, we can definitely see some additional uh, risks to the current forecast, but we believe uh, that overall the betting companies, as Andre said, will be able uh, to find uh, uh, some uh, substitution for the major sports events and develop their activities because, again, they're also willing to uh, make business and make money and no one is uh, kind of uh, willing to uh, stay, uh, everyone stays put, basically. Uh, so that's that's for the guidance. Uh, and for Rocket Bank, we expect that in 2021 uh, there will be no running costs for Rocket Bank. Uh, the uh, project that we will pilot in payment services will either become uh, the part of payment services and will be uh, working um, as part of this business line, or they will be closed with that. Uh, Oh, 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 on top of that, we believe that overall uh, the potential costs of this pilot are insignificant for uh, total cost of payment services. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Ildar Davidson with Wood and Company. Please proceed with your question. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to ask the question. I just wanted to ask two, if I may. So to follow up on the previous question around your assumptions, could you perhaps specify what sort of GDP uh, dynamic do you expect this year? Have you considered a recession scenario? And do you also see potentially downside risks to non-betting activity related to just slower economic activity of your customers? That would be my first question. And then separately, uh, uh, the second is on new products that you may be considering in payment segment uh, since betting has been the core for quite a while, in the, one of the core growth drivers. And you mentioned that you are targeting self-employed uh, audience. Uh, could you perhaps specify in a bit more detail what sort of propositions and solutions you are looking so that we understand that, that you have a more long-term um, sort of opportunity rather than just uh, very attractive niches that you periodically identify. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I, I, I will cover those. So for the uh, for the assumptions for uh, for our guidance, we we embedded some uh, economic slowdown as well in, in our numbers. At the same time, uh, <clears throat> historically, we, we will be, we, we always was kind of a counter cycle versus crisis. Uh, and uh, currently, for example, as I mentioned already, we see, the, we, we see those effects on the online gains, for example. I believe that if uh, we'll have the same story like with uh, the slowdown and the uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, but the sports event will be still in place, we will feel uh, much better, and uh, because people will sit at home and <laughs> watch watch sport and do the best. So overall, uh, on the payment service business, uh, we are not, I would say, that dependent on on the uh, micro. However, we embedded uh, overall uh, some slowdown on this one, uh, uh, on our numbers as well. Uh, regarding second question on the new product, so. Um, 
uh, we uh, th th that exactly what what we mentioned about both rocket and Soviet. As you know, we are already for some time working closely with uh, businesses that are working with self-employed, including the taxi companies, scrap metal pickers, uh, and, and and many more. Uh, and we believe that uh, it's, um, th 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 there is a certain demand and opportunity for us to enrich our product proposition to those B2B and related uh, uh, B2C clients with uh, debit products, with uh, loans that can be linked to, uh, to operations that we are uh, having on those, uh, on those type of customers. So that's what we'll uh, be doing uh, and uh, uh, I would say testing uh, in the nearest time. And we already, uh, as I said, started this one with, uh, with the Rocket Bank uh, product proposition to our clients. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to join the question queue, please press star 1 at this time. Our next question comes from line of Andrei Pavlov Rusinov with Goldman Sachs. Please proceed with your question. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot for, um, uh, for the presentation. Uh, um, I've got several questions. First of all, um, could you please remind us uh, what actually was your uh, betting uh, share in, in payments and revenues in the first quarter, and also um, in the money remittances, as far as I remember, there's also a, a kind of a, a share of, um, of volumes that are related to uh, betting payouts, so also what is, there, what is the share there? Um, and uh, um, essentially, uh, um, also, uh, kind of, this is my first question, I'll probably ask another one later, thank you. Andre, Andre, hi, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you for your question. So, uh, as we've discussed, we don't disclose uh, the exact share of betting revenues uh, in our e-commerce market vertical. Uh, but I can say that uh, for 2019, we have disclosed uh, the share of betting in volume. Uh, it's roughly around 22%. The information is disclosed in our 20th report, 22% of the entire group volumes. So you can basically extrapolate to the uh, share uh, uh, in, in, in revenues. So uh, that's for uh, the betting as part of the e-commerce. And uh, in terms of uh, the uh, in terms of the share of money remittance, which is connected with the payout for betting merchants, uh, that would be uh, around like uh, mid teens uh, percentages. Uh, thanks very much. That's, that's, that's quite helpful. And, and, and as for uh, maybe just continuing with the money remittances segment, uh, was basically there was quite strong growth of 30% in the fourth quarter uh, and overall for the year. Uh, could you uh, let's just maybe um, illustrate us a little bit what were the drivers and also what is the actual um, share there uh, coming from uh, uh, the uh, uh, basically um, wallet to card payments or uh, some uh, um, uh, commercial payments within wallets uh, and also cross border? What what are, um, what is the breakdown at the moment? Uh, and uh, also maybe if you could give us an outlook for for this segment that's baked in into your. Uh, guidance, uh, so given that it's not so much related to betting, so uh, in, in a normal uh, or kind of a re relatively um, uh, muted economic circumstances, what could be the, the growth there? Uh, okay, so first, uh, first for the fourth quarter uh, growth on the money remittance, there are two big uh, elements here. First is the uh, growth of the self-employed because uh, the part of the big, big portion of the self-employed volumes go to the money remittance when it's payout, payout to cart. Uh, and uh, we uh, continue to, to grow in this segment in the taxi uh, payouts and other categories. The second one uh, was uh, Tajikistan. Uh, classical money remittance to Tajikistan. There was a um, regulatory change in Tajikistan for the money remittance company, 
and not all of the marketplace were able to comply with them. Uh, while we were, and we uh, observed quite, a, I would say, strong growth in the classical money remitters, uh, remittances in Tajikistan for the uh, for the fourth quarter. Uh, going forward, uh, if, if we will discuss the, the, the money remittance part, uh, we see, um, we, we expect, as you can imagine, the, the, the similar type of uh, slowdown for this portion that Varvara mentioned related to the uh, betting companies. Uh, at the same time, uh, and probably the, some economic slowdown will reflect the uh, classical money remittance volumes as well. Uh, regarding other, other, other parts uh, with um, self-employed, uh, we expect, I would say, uh, the slowdown for the short-term period, like three months or four months when we will observe uh, uh, these uh, limitations that we, we, we see now as soon as coronavirus story will end. Uh, we believe that those, those self-employed volumes will be back and will continue on the growing, uh, growing trend. So uh, I would say it will depend how long we will, uh, we will observe the current situation in terms of the uh, coronavirus. Thanks very much. And just my final question is uh, uh, regarding their, um, your uh, targeted dividend uh, payout level. Uh, is there kind of de decline in the target uh, anywhere related to their um, economic outlook, or uh, it's kind of uh, 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 maybe just a, uh, kind of your precaution to set a bit lower payout, and then if uh, things uh, improve, uh, then you will be back to uh, the previous year payout? Or are there any investments that you are uh, looking for and hence uh, lower payout? Okay, so uh, first of all, um, I would say, I, I, I would like to say that we expect that even though the payout uh, ratio was uh, decreased and again, uh, the, we aim to uh, distribute not less than 50% of adjusted net profit, we still believe uh, that uh, there is a good chance that the um, nominal payout will continue to increase. And, uh, uh, of course, we are slightly cautious in terms of how much uh, we aim to distribute for the year because, as we discussed and as we said before, there is a lot of uncertainty uh, this year uh, connected to both uh, the coronavirus and the economic uh, and then the following economic repercussions. Uh, so in this respect, we are, of course, conscious. We don't plan at the moment any significant investments, uh, and uh, all our uh, CapEx payments, et cetera, are in line with uh, the previous year, in line with the budget, so nothing to um, kind of – uh, nothing to read through um, from, 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 from a slightly lower payout ratio. Uh, let's see how it goes. If we will have the chance and we will, if we will be comfortable with, with paying a payout above 50%, we will definitely do that. We remain committed to distributing excess cash to the shareholders, but we believe for the stability uh, of the overall situation and for the lack of uh, clarity on the market, it is uh, better to uh, have a slightly lower uh, payout uh, minimum payout ratio for this year. Thank you. That's, that's very clear. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Our next question is a follow-up from the line of Vladimir Bespolov with VTB Capital. Please proceed with your question. Thank you. Thank you for taking my follow-up questions. I have actually two. First, could you um, update on Tochka? At some point, you expected that Tochka's net profit would be around 1 billion rubles. Do you expect something like this uh, this year to happen? And uh, is Tochka going to distribute its profit as dividends to Kiwi, or it will still reinvest the, uh, its earnings for, for some period of time? And the second question is on the change in regulation of inactivity fees. Could you estimate the impact from that change on your fourth quarter and on the on 2020 in terms of revenues and earnings? Thank you. Uh, Valoja, hi, uh, hi again. Uh, so on Tochka, um, yes, we believe that at some point uh, Tochka, uh, GSP Tochka uh, net profit can reach one billion. That's absolutely. Uh, 
feasible uh, feasible estimate. I won't be sure that it will happen uh, in the end of 2021, but I believe that uh, in a year or two from now, depending on on on, on the macroeconomic macroeconomic conditions and how the situation evolves, uh, the um, uh, Pochka will reach uh, the this, 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 this level of profitability. We see very good trends in the business. It has bre- bre- broken, broke even uh, this year. And as you can see in our financial report, we have booked pretty substantial, uh, pretty substantial uh, profit this year. Uh, so uh, if 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 the market is uh, doing well and uh, if the situation in the country doesn't deteriorate, maybe even uh, by the end of 2020 we can reach. Uh, such goal. So, uh, as for the dividends, uh, there has not yet been uh, a decision on that. So, uh, that would be discussed further with uh, Polish management and that Uh Your second question was uh, about some activity fees. Uh, so, here we don't expect really a material impact uh, on uh, our revenues from this change. It's, I would, I, I would uh, kind of um, outline that you should treat it as a postponement of certain revenues uh, because starting from October, uh, the wallets which became inactive, they became inactive not after six months but after 12 months. So, uh, their kind of inactivity period, uh, activity period was prolonged. So in this respect, we were not able uh, to book part of the revenues that we uh, used to book in uh, the fourth quarter this year, but we will start booking them later. So that's just a time and difference, uh, not a significant change uh, in our revenue expectations or something like this. Thank you, Vari. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our question and answer session, and that concludes our conference this morning. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect your lines and have a wonderful day.